And welcome back to another episode of Oklahoma Senate on Deck with Senator Greg Treat. I'm Aaron Cooper with Senate Republican Communications. Senator Treat, how are you this glorious Thursday afternoon? Glorious. Uh, <laughs> I'm awesome. I just uh, came back from lunch. It's beautiful weather outside. I hope I get to get, take advantage of it. It is. Uh, we've been holed up in the Capitol building most of this week because uh, this was the first week of uh, uh, floor work in the Senate, and that means that all the Senate bills that made out of committee are now moving on to the Senate floor. So that means a all the activity in the Senate this past week and the coming week centers on the Senate floor. And what's what are those days like when there's a lot of floor work? Uh, they're very long uh, and fast paced, and, and not necessarily long this first week. I anticipate long week, long days next week, right? Um, deadline week, but it's more fast paced. I always feel bad for the kids who are here on the slow, like first week when <laughs> right. we uh, for the pages. Uh, uh, there's this not week, a lot of work for them to do uh, when most of the committee things are happening. Yeah, most floor. committee work, you know, they're taking papers from here and there. But the pages this week uh, got their money's worth. And, uh, in fact, this week I had a, a former state senator, Brooks Douglas. His right. son was, was here uh, paging for us. And, you know, the Senate family is really important to me. Right. And having a former senator have his kid up here was kind of special to watch his dad see him up here. That is uh, cool. But all the kids have stories, and uh, I, one of my highlights every week is sitting down or standing up with the pages and talking to them uh, midweek and seeing what their experience is like. It's, uh, I tell you what, they, they got a, a lot of experience this week. They did, and I, I sit in a lot of those meetings with you and the pages, and there's some great questions that come from the high school juniors and seniors and sophomores sometimes. Yeah, uh, like uh, last week they asked me why I couldn't button my top button, and it's because <laughs> I'm too heavy. Uh, that was a great question. Uh, but others, uh, there's, yes. There's the, more substantive questions. That there are, up. but that was the one that, like, uh, <laughs> st- yeah. stuck with you for, yeah. for whatever reason. I can't imagine what that would be. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and it's always cool to also hear uh, these kids have it together. They have the, they have Most of them know where they want to go to school, what they want to study, what they want to do in life. So some, some great young leaders that come up to the Senate get some experience. And, and a wide variety. Yeah. Uh, you would think that some of the ones that would sign up would be interested in politics or right. law, but... Uh, this week, I think we had someone that wanted to be a neurosurgeon, right. someone that wanted to go to the Naval Academy, right. someone that wanted to uh, own a restaurant, be a chef, right. and everything in between. So right. um, it was really cool. So the floor work is continuing next week. I believe uh, Senator David, the majority floor leader, said uh, approximately 30, 31 bills each session uh, in in the case that we want to hear every bill that passes out of the committee. So there's a, quite a bit of work ahead this yeah, week. Yeah, so just explain. I think at the first of the week it was 37 to stay mm-hmm. on pace if every bill got heard right. or got requested to be heard. It was roughly 420, 430 bills that made out of committee, I believe. Yeah, and so you have a Monday afternoon session because we, we have a lot of meetings Monday morning, then right. Monday afternoon, Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon, Thursday morning, and if needed, Thursday afternoon. Right. And uh, this coming week you still have some bills uh, out there that – you'll have to work on the floor. Yeah. Um, you think they'll pass? <laughs> Man, I sure hope so. Uh, I think they'll pass. And there's a good, a great chance that they will. There are, uh, you know, quite a few of them are still works in progress that uh, working out with the, the house and the governor's right. and, um, deals. So a lot of, a lot of mine will still be, uh, again, it, I talk about it on this quite a bit, but title off Yeah. where it's not eligible to become law. Even we've got the governor's desk. It's a procedural right. move. To, uh, to just continue to work on a bill. So you'll see quite a few of mine yeah. still move title right. off uh, because they're all really big moves in state government that, right. that we want to make sure we get right. Right. And then you have the bill that was uh, a constituent brought to your attention about the, I guess it was the licensing on accountants. Mm-hmm. So that's a really cool bill, too. It's just something like that uh, still left to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you've got the monumental shifts in state government that I'm trying to do on merit protection and, and ODOT and Turnpike Authority. But then you also right. have something that's probably more near and dear to my heart because uh, I know that I have 80,000 bosses in Senate District 47. And one of those had an issue with a license where she had moved back into the state, had her husband, that um, she's a, a widow, and had some huge health care bills, wanted to continue to be able to make some money mm-hmm. in Oklahoma. But because of our licensing impediments, she was having trouble and, and uh we haven't gotten that to the finish line yet, but I'm confident that we will. And that illustrates a point you make. You often get asked the question, um, how do members of the public constituents effectively 
uh, talk with senators and representatives and, and advocate for issues to them. And that gets to the point you always make, and that is get to know your representative and your senator. Yeah. Here, I'll give you a, a, a tip uh, just off the top of my head. Don't call us and say, you idiot, I'm running against you if you don't do this. That doesn't tend to work. Uh, no, uh, it wouldn't in most instances, yeah. No, in, in no profession uh, do people do that. But I, that's oftentimes my first interaction with right. someone. The best piece of advice, I think, is during the interim, so during the summer and fall months, to sit down and get to know us. Right. Uh, we're human beings. I have kids. I have to get to school. Kids, I have to get to sporting events. I have to balance a budget. I have to, uh, you know, make sure groceries are on the table. Right. Just like everyone else. Yeah. And we, um, when you get to know us during the interim, when I hear that name, see that name, pull up on my caller ID or see an email, it really impacts me. Now, this particular individual, the first time I met this individual was via an email telling me about her issue. So that works as well. Handwritten yeah. uh, letters about what's going on. I get those all the time. I read those uh, emails, um, phone calls, but really getting to know us during the interim is, right. is really important. And you're not an accountant. We're not, everyone thinks that's a bunch of doctors and lawyers and, and bankers up here, but that's not the case of all, at all. Elected officials represent the populace and come from a wide variety of backgrounds, so you can't possibly we can't possibly be uh, expected to know every problem that arises. And so it's great that constituents can bring that issue to you that they had an interaction with the state government or state agency. Yeah, and, and just another point on that. A lot of times people will leave voicemails or shoot me a Facebook message without like much clarity and it just says vote against senate bill 1132 i'm just pulling that random right. I, I don't know what that is but it proves the point i don't really know most bill numbers you know, i'm the pro tem i look at all the bills i have staff look at some of the bills talk to colleagues about bills There's more than a thousand i think filed this, this yeah year. and it's just some of them don't ever get out of committee right. so i don't hear it right. and a lot of times information especially on social media platforms is a little bit behind so a bill may have already passed out of committee right. two weeks ago and I'm just now getting a message on it so put a little bit of a subject matter too obviously I can pull up and look what Senate Bill 1130 now I'm kind of curious what Senate Bill 1132 <laughs> is but what about uh, from the 2019 session I think yeah no, I just want to know maybe Could be a carryover bill but we'll see yeah, I don't know. What if it's one of your bills? That'd be pretty. Uh, that would be kind of awesome. I, I'm really <laughs> tempted to go get my phone and look, but I'll stay. I'll stay here. All right, I appreciate that. So, this week, the Thursday, March 12th, is the deadline for bills to make it off the Senate floor to continue advancing in the legislative process. Um, the House passed a bill last week, and and an issue that's been talked about on this podcast, and it's uh, an important topic this session, is pension reform and in colas or cost of living adjustments and. So there's a bill making its way through the legislature, and, and you've talked a little bit about it and talked with the House leadership. Give us some an update on that and a little bit of perspective on that. Yeah, some exciting news there. Right. We last year uh, wanted to make sure that we followed the law and did an actuarial study over the summer on two different plans. One was a, a 2% plan and one was a 4% plan. When I first came in office, pensions was one of the biggest issues facing Oklahoma, unfunded pension liability to be more specific. Teacher retirement at that time, if memory serves me, was 47%. Most funds were in the mid-40s to the low 50s. Uh, and that really hurt us as a state on bonding capacity. It was a lot more expensive to borrow money for cities, for school districts because of that. And if the funds were uh, not in great financial shape, that threatened the retirement of future retirees, right? Yeah, and, and actually the entire state budget. Right. So what we did was we made some really critical reforms. Not easy to make reforms. Yeah. Big big lifts here at the Capitol. And we've started putting money off the top to the tune of about a half a billion dollars, over a half a billion dollars a year. $330 million last year's teacher retirement alone. So we've put ourselves in shape to be able to talk about uh, COLAs, cost of living adjustments. Right. And so the Speaker and I communicated last week about a plan that was originating over the House that was a stair-stepped approach. So uh, zero to one year is a certain percentage, one to two, two to five. Right. So those people who'd been out the longest period of time got the biggest right. cost of living adjustment because their wages were not adjusted like the, the people who just retired recently. Right. right. And so we're, we're in agreement in principle on the stair-step approach. We're trying to deliver a COLA. Toward the end of last week, that's when the markets really went down. So yeah, uh, huge fall. In the concern market. and what yeah. does that do with the pensions? But that doesn't take our eyes off of making sure that we get a COLA delivered. We just want to do it in a responsible manner, and I think you'll see us uh, succeed in that this year. 
So stick, stay tuned to the podcast. We'll keep talking about that and giving you an update on how that bill advances uh, through the process. Um, you can always find more information at OKSenate.gov on, on all the bills we talk about. Anything else uh, to wrap up this week's episode of the podcast? Kind of a short week uh, here, and I don't want to keep you. When do you plan putting this up? Are you putting this up tomorrow? So, or yeah, I can put it on Friday. What I like to do is I like to drop the podcast audio on Friday to platforms such as Apple uh, Music, Google Play Music, Spotify, TuneIn. Those are some of the podcasting apps we're on. Uh, put the audio out on Friday, then maybe put the video on Facebook, YouTube, Monday. It seems like uh, we get better views that way on Monday morning, at least the video side. I think. So, the, so Monday morning, that's the 9th, right? Um, sure. Is that the night? <laughs> okay. That is my wife's birthday, so I'm going to look straight in the camera since you're posting this on Monday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Marissa. I love you. This is the most important thing that happens this week. <laughs> Happy birthday, Marissa. We all... Uh, oh, yeah, I thought you were about to sing. Go ahead. I'm not about to sing. I wouldn't <laughs> do that to our listeners. Uh, well, I will. No, How about I, you? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I have a reputation to uphold. Well, we appreciate your time, Senator Treat. We appreciate the listeners at home. Um, leave us a comment. Uh, if you're lo- watching or listening to us on social media, you can always send us an email here at the podcast. That's on deck at OKSenate.gov. You can contact Senator Treat directly at his office. Just swing on over to OKSenate.gov and find out ways to contact Senator Treat's office. Maybe, uh, like he said, get a get a chance to get to know him uh, outside of the session when things calm down a little bit. Um, talk about the issues that are important to you. We always want to hear from our listeners if there's something that you would like us to talk about, something that happened that you don't quite understand or need a little more context to, that's what we try to do here. So I will give you the last word if there's anything else, so any anyone, other birthday shout-outs. If to anyone is listening to the podcast on Friday or Saturday or Sunday, don't tell Marissa I said it. Wait <laughs> until Monday. And I hope she tunes in on Monday. So make sure you you tag Marissa on Monday. Yeah, don't text her. I think you guys may be out of – you may be in spotty cell phone coverage area, so it may not pop up on the instant notifications on podcasting, and that way Monday morning on social media. Just flood her with messages on Monday. We want to wish her a happy birthday. Yeah. All right, well, we thank you and and hope you enjoyed this episode and ask you to tune in again on the next episode of Oklahoma Center On Deck. Bye.